If you're like me, you've always wanted to create massive sci-fi movies without a giant budget. Not just watching films anymore, but creating a story of your own. Building your own world and your own characters and putting yourself in the middle of the action to start recording and creating movies that you want to watch. Using Unreal Engine 5, you can start crafting your film, placing the characters, environments, and pointing the camera yourself to start creating your vision, scene by scene, shot by shot. Not with million dollar budgets, but using free software in the computer you have at home. Look, two years ago, this wouldn't be possible, but today, anyone can create visual effects and films using Unreal Engine 5. And to prove it, I want to pull back the curtain and show you exactly how we created War of Being and the samurai sword fight behind Tesseract's latest music video. What's up, my name is Josh Tunin, and for the last eight years, I've worked as an artist and supervisor on Hollywood films, on movies like Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, and Across the Spider-Verse. And I first started learning visual effects because I wanted to make my films look like my favorite Hollywood movies. And I didn't realize until I was years into my career that I had stopped making films of my own. That's why in 2020, I teamed up with Kyle Kadow and Steven Cleveland, who were instrumental in creating Stay, my original short film based on The Last of Us. We all grew up in Wisconsin and have been obsessed with creating films. And I first started learning Unreal because you can make films in real time. When you're waiting around for your CG renders to finish, nothing gets done, the creation has stopped. That's why I love working on set when everyone's there together trying to figure out how we make the best film possible. So I made it my mission to figure out how to take the best of both worlds and bring them together. I made a few different shorts and previs animations all inside of Unreal using characters I found online through free resources and the Unreal Marketplace, but I've been dying to create something with original characters. When all of a sudden I got a phone call from Kyle and Steven as a director duo behind Found Format. They had some original concepts and characters for Tesseract's new song, War of Being. They had an original world, characters, and story, and I was sold right away. They had asked if we could do an 11 minute sci-fi action short film, and they came to me asking if they could do virtual production, but we didn't have the budget to create original costumes and to film on an LED volume. And I told them for something this ambitious, it would be better to do it all inside of Unreal Engine 5, doing motion capture to create our performances and then give us the time to really create and craft something special and unique for this world. Because after all, we'd have to build the characters and the environment ourselves all from scratch. But because of our schedule, we had to start with the motion capture first. So when I was back in Wisconsin around Christmas time, we got together to do the motion capture shoot at Yugo Fabrica, and we got Vic and Rick of the Chicago Swordsplay Guild to come up and create an original choreography for this scene. I'd started using Rococo suits in my own workflow and was ready to try them out for a full sequence. So together, all in the same room, we plotted out the entire sequence and started crafting the motion capture beat by beat, trying to tell a story by the end of the film. This is easily the most fun part of the process. We get to come up with ideas, try things out for the first time, and just see if they're gonna work. But something you should know about using motion capture is that you need to do motion capture cleanup. There's no skipping over this last step. When you see a movie like Avatar Way of the Water, Every single shot in that three hour movie was hand touched and reanimated by a senior level artist, some of the best in the world. And you should fully expect that you'll have to do lots of cleanup on this data after the fact. Rococo lets you do a lot of this in their own software where you can get a first pass that we could immediately start importing into Unreal Engine and start framing up our shots. So we took that motion capture data and created some test shots inside of Unreal so we could start blocking out our environment and a crucial step, design our characters. Starting out, it was all about the characters, the camera, and the environment. What are the compositions we're gonna make between the poses of our characters and their place inside of the environment? The first step was creating the edit. So I would lay out the performance, get our two samurais in the scene. We would retarget the animations from the Rococo rig onto our samurai rig. And then I would take six or seven different camera angles and render out the entire frame range. I would export play blasts of the Unreal scene and start to assemble these key angles inside of an edit and make a quick cut and send that over to Kyle and Steven first. That way we can make our movies using these blockouts to start creating our film and making sure it works before we had our characters and adding in that photorealistic touch. Well, the first CG artist to jump on board was Florent Vilbert. Not only can he build environments in Unreal, he's a concept artist first. So we got to be really creative and try out lots of ideas and design this world for the first time. 
And early on, it's all about iterating fast, not trying to get something completely perfect. At first, we tried different floating mountains, submerging the entire landscape in the clouds, trying out different graphic compositions. That's why I love using Unreal, is you can discover and try out these ideas without committing to them or spending too long on any one idea. So after a few weeks of going back and forth and trying to capture the concepts that the band sent over, we landed on this foggy landscape, this old world filled with decaying buildings and robots spread across the vistas. And we use lots of fog and clouds to create depth through our mountainscapes. We created three different environments. The first was our cliffscape, which we did two different lighting scenarios as the sun dips below our two planets. And then our samurais fall down into the graveyard filled with the bodies of their past duels. So we tried to tell the story of these epic large scale battles that happened years prior. And then I went ahead and built the environment for the scribe, who's the puppet master controlling this battle behind the scenes. Now the characters were designed by Sterling Slack. These were original designs. The helmets were completely sculpted by hand, but we did start from existing models so we could start from another rig and give ourselves a little head start getting into animation. We worked together to bring Tesseract's concepts to life, creating new assets and textures for the armor and the helmets. We even went in to add physics simulation to the entire body too. So the cloth, the armor, and the two bulbs on their shoulders would bounce around and give a lot more dynamic life and energy without having to go ahead and cache simulations every time. We just let the physics simulations generate something new and embrace that as part of our workflow. But there's a big problem you have to know about motion capture. Now, there's two types of motion capture, outside in, which are cameras recording the little dots you might see on a motion capture suit, or there's markerless tracking, where the motion is being tracked within the suit itself using accelerometers between all the different joints. They can approximate the movement of the character in 3D. But this usually falls apart when you need two hands connected together to hold a sword. We knew this was a limitation going in, and that's why it was so instrumental to have a great, robust rig inside of Unreal so that we could take our two separated hands and attach them to a sword and have them all moving around together. And this is why we needed our animation team to go in and reanimate nearly every single shot. Matt Ringo came in to create the control rigs for these characters. Dude, you have no idea how satisfying that is. To save the day to get our control rigs prepped perfectly for animation. That way we could do all the motion capture cleanup entirely in engine. Andrea Lim, Tyler Lindsay, and Yorislav of Bone Studios came together to reanimate some of the pivotal moments in the fight scene. Some of the standoffs or any moments where you see the swords collide, we had to go back in and reanimate those moments to make sure they had the impact and the weight that we felt when we recorded it on set. We collaborated on this project by using a GitHub repository and our entire team connected into one project. We all worked in separate levels and pushed our updates at the end of each day. And that way we could all be working out of the same project file on our local machines, but contributing to a shared project file together. Now a pro tip, and this is something pretty cool. If you parent your characters and your cameras to the same parent actor that we're just using as our reference point for our stage, we can move or rotate our stage anywhere around the world, but the compositions will look exactly the same. And this can really help when blocking out your shots. And once we had our characters polished and our environments finished, we could put them in the scene and start making our final compositions. And then to finish off the entire project, I stepped in to do the final lighting, compositing, and effects. By the end, we had over 120 final shots. A lot of this film actually ended up on the cutting room floor for various reasons. It's just part of the process. Most everything is rendered directly out of Unreal and given a really simple lens effect treatment to get realistic glows and diffusion that will happen coming through a camera lens. But all of the lighting elements and effects were created inside of Unreal using Unreal Engine's tools, not added in after the fact. Achieving any level of mastery in visual effects or filmmaking takes one thing, and that's practice. You have to practice over and over again, and that's why in Unreal, you can drag around lights, reframe the shot, rotate the background, or just change the camera animation entirely. It allows for so many options, and that way it can help find your own style and taste when creating films. And I was excited to get those 200 reps in on a single project.
I wanted to share some of the key lessons I learned, mistakes that I made that I wouldn't repeat again, and I'd love to pass forward for anyone else making films for the first time. First off, characters are the biggest bottleneck. Make sure that you have your character and your rig completely finished before you go into your motion capture. We still made it work in the end, but this caused a lot of scheduling and pipeline issues because we didn't have our finished characters when we really needed to start animating to finish the entire film. And one of the biggest struggles on this was the hardware limitations. The graphics card we used to render this entire short was an RTX 3080. We had a hard limitation of only eight gigs of VRAM that we could put inside of a single scene. If you're taking this seriously, you definitely want at least a 3090 GPU. Instead of eight gigs, you have 24 to work with, and that gives you three times the resources of what you can add into your scene. And lastly, the obstacle is the path. There's lots of errors that you're going to run into along the way. It's part of the process, but if you learn how to do it once, you never have to learn how to do it again. So you can replace your render times with learning and teaching yourself for the first time, and that allows you to make the entire film in real time. Now, if you wanna make your own films and you've struggled learning Unreal in the past, then you'll wanna know about Unreal Fundamentals. This is the playbook for creating real-time visual effects in films inside of Unreal 5. Together, we'll create four different environments step-by-step step to go from a complete Unreal beginner to someone who can create visual effects in films in real time, in a matter of days, not months or years. This is compressing all the lessons I've learned from the last two years of using Unreal Engine on set, and creating animated films on my own, to create a single simplified learning path so anyone can go from a complete beginner to mastering Unreal's workflows and tools, focusing on what matters most for visual effects and filmmaking. This is the exact training I wish I had when I was first starting out, and I've included a lot of great bonuses and cheat sheets to help you make your own films faster and easier. So avoid the pitfalls that I went through of getting stuck and troubleshooting by yourself and start creating your own films and visual effects like never before. So go to unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals and get started today. And if you sign up now, you'll get instant access to over 10 hours of videos. And lastly, I'll give you the exact render settings I used when making War of Being and my entire compositing template so you can composite your shots in one click. I'm holding nothing back and giving all of my best resources away in this program because I want to start creating more and more films in Unreal and we need more visual effects artists and filmmakers to learn all the workflows so we can all start creating films together. So take your future in visual effects and filmmaking into your own hands and get started today. And your support will directly funnel back into creating more films just like this and hiring more talented artists to create bigger and better projects. I'll be sharing more and more from this project in the coming weeks, but I hope this gives you a top-down view of how you can create your own films all inside of Unreal 5. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.